strict liability offences. The case of Gammon, Hong Kong Limited versus Attorney General of Hong Kong. Like most criminal offences which require actus reus and mens rea, strict liability offences only require proof that the defendant has committed the actus reus of the offence. Strict liability offences are usually aimed at protecting public safety or morals, and often target those who carry out activities which, if done carelessly, could pose a danger to the public. Examples include those in charge of handling food, such as in Callow and Tillstone, and those in charge of potentially hazardous waste materials, such as in Alpha Cell. Sometimes it can be difficult for the courts to tell whether or not an offence is one of strict liability. Where the offence is contained in an Act of Parliament, the principle in the case of Sweet and Parsley applies. There is a presumption that the offence requires mens rea. The case of Gammon involved a building contractor who had deviated in a substantial way from their plans which had been approved by the Hong Kong Building Authority. Each new hour holds new chances, a new beginning. The horizon leans forward, offering you space to place new steps of change. The issue at stake was whether or not it needed to be proved that Gammon knew that the deviation from the plans was material. This was a statutory offence, and the Privy Council began with the principle in Sweet and Parsley, the presumption that an offence requires mens rea. The case of Gammon is important because the Privy Council laid down guidelines regarding the presumption of mens rea in these kind of cases. Lord Scarman summarised the following five principles. Firstly, there is a presumption of a law that mens rea is required before a person can be found guilty of a criminal offence. Secondly, the presumption is particularly strong where the offence is truly criminal in character. Thirdly, the presumption applies to statutory offences and can be displaced only if this is clearly or by necessary implication of the effect of the statute. Four, the only situation in which the presumption can be displaced is where the statute is concerned with an issue of social concern and public safety is such an issue. 5. Even where a statute is concerned with such an issue, the presumption of mens rea stands unless it can also be shown that the creation of strict liability will be effective to promote the objects of the statute by encouraging greater vigilance to prevent the commission of the prohibited act. Building that was at the uh, part of the decision in the Gammon case. Uh, it's in the Hong Kong's financial area. Uh, in particular, it's on a place called Queen's Road. Uh, this is the one. This is the site of the former marine lot number three, the building site in question in the case of Gammon. As already established, strict liability offences do not require mens rea. Where the court is unsure whether or not an offence requires mens rea, they must assume that it does, unless the presumption can be rebutted or defeated under the Gammon principles. If the presumption is rebutted, the state of the mind of the defendant becomes irrelevant in the context of the offence, and the only issue to be determined is whether or not they completed the actus reus. Strict liability offences are sometimes regarded as controversial. Do you think it is right that a person who does not have criminal intentions, and who is unaware of any harm that they are causing, be convicted of criminal offence? Punishment could be a prison sentence. It has also been said that strict liability offences do not raise standards and that they may be contrary to the Human Rights Act by depriving the defendant of a fair trial. However, strict liability offences are easy to enforce. The prosecution does not have to prove mens rea. 
Parliament could also create a due diligence defence if it considers this appropriate. And any lack of fault, knowledge, blameworthiness or culpability can be taken into account by the court as mitigation during sentencing for the offence.